Let's be honest. There's no guidebook when it comes to relationships. So we end up having to stumble through life trying to figure things out for ourselves. What if there was a podcast that found the answers for you, that provided insight to build a successful relationship and ultimately find the companionship you've always hoped for? Welcome to the Girls Ask Guys show, where we answer the questions most people are afraid to ask when it comes to lessons in life and love. It's time to master this thing called life together with your hosts, John and Ashley. And welcome everybody to the Girls Ask Guys show. My name's Ashley, and of course, I'm here with John, and we are here to talk about how to be unforgettable, which is something that you want to master if you want to stand out, if you want to meet somebody, and, you know, obviously you don't want them to forget you. Being unforgettable is something that requires a little bit of finesse, but once again, like everything we, we talk about, it's very simple once you get into the swing of things. Exactly. And really, you want to become unforgettable to everybody that you meet. Because it can help you not only in your personal relationships, yeah. but also developing new friendships. And amazingly enough, in your professional life, you become the person people think about instantly when something comes up. And who doesn't want to do that? I mean, especially in your, your professional life, when we think of getting promotions, sometimes you think of jumping through all of that red tape, doing all those things. Me and John were actually just talking about red tape. But if you transform yourself into an unforgettable person, while you'll still have to go through that formality and all of those paperwork, you'll be at the top of everyone's list. So it's not even like you have to think about anything. If you're that unforgettable person, you have that uh, razzmatazz. I want to say razzmatazz. I say that um, if you... If you, uh, if you have that razzmatazz, people are just going to naturally float to you. They're going to like you and you're going to be having fun with life. Everything's going to be fun. You're not going to dread anything. And that's what it's all about. Really? The only thing you need is just a slightly open mind and a desire to have a happy life. Because really, when you're, when you become unforgettable, things become very simple. It's not as much work think about it. You go up and you meet somebody and you make this great first impression with them. And then they just constantly think about you and they want to spend more time with you, which means you have to put out less effort. And this doesn't mean you're going to become the next Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or any of those things. So don't sit there and say, yeah, they're unforgettable because they've created an empire. And we're talking more of a personality thing, you know, being known for not so much your your kind of shady practices when it comes to work labor, but, you know, being known for the right reasons, being known because people think you're, you're, they know you, they like you, they trust you, and they see you as a person they can look up to rather than someone who's either a, I don't know if this is going to sound right, either a, a, someone who's on their level, they'll see you as more of a mentor than a confidant. The way that we kind of go about how to make yourself unforgettable we're going to borrow from the business world because just like Jeff Bezos and look at the empire that he built, well, there are certain things that he did to make that happen. And look at Apple. All you have to do is just look at the logo and you know exactly what it is is that's going on with that company. Yeah. You kind of get like these people behind you that kind of go out and like promote you to other people. Oh, you got this? This is the person you need to talk to. Yep. Be the next Joe Rogan. I just have a person with that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but what's the first step, man? What do, what do we do first? Well, the very first thing that you want to do is, like I said, you want to have like that slightly open mind and you want to really kind of know what you want to be known for. You want to be known, but you want to be known for the right reasons. You don't want to be one of those people that's like up on the FBI's 10 most wanted. <laughs> that's kind of mm -hmm. the wrong reasons that you would want to be remembered. Um, and when you want to be remembered, you know, it's got to be for something sort of specific. So when we talk about big names like Joe Rogan, granted, yeah, we all know Joe Rogan from, I'm pretty sure, UFC um, and, and Fear Factor. But the main thing that we know him for now is his podcast. So it really takes that idea of, you know, zoning in on what your focus, what you want to be remembered for and start focusing on that. You want to be remembered for being the nicest person in the world without being a pushover. Start to focus your energies on that. Shift your ways so that you are a nicer person, that people feel like they can talk to you, 
that they know that when they talk to you, they're not going to be met with judgment. It's those kind of things where you have to kind of, not even have to, you have to know what you want to be remembered for before you can even begin to be remembered. Probably the most frustrating answer that we get when we're working with somebody and we're working on personality traits and finding out who they are. And then we get through all of that, do all of this work, and we go, okay, so what do you want to be remembered for? And we get this arcane answer or this very non-specific answer. I want to be known for being myself or I want to be known for everything. And we're okay, like, okay, so we know your name's <laughs> Dave and that we, and we know you can do these things. You're already remembered. There you go. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, what about just, Dave? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't convey anything. It's people are like, they're just, yeah, he's a nice person. Do you want to be known for being a nice person or do you want that specific moment where when they think of you, they're like, oh yeah, he sat there for 20 minutes and helped me figure out how to block all of the spam coming in on my social media. Right. Which is more powerful. So you want to have a clear message and we kind of build that into everything that we do. Everything from figuring out who you are to figuring out what your traits are and then kind of bringing that out through how you dress and your mannerisms. And it's really everything just builds on top of itself. So when you step out there, people are like, that's an interesting person. I want to know more about them. And then they walk away and they know exactly what you're about. Yeah, it's one of those uh, buzzwords that we hear so often that we're kind of all getting sick of as a collective, you know, branding. It's all about branding yourself and being the person who you want to be in it. And branding is specific. I mean, any successful person, when you look at their brand from the minute they either a walk on stage and then they step behind the mic from the minute they put their shoes on, we know what to expect from this person. And that's how you become remembered. It's, it's literally repetition. It's the fact that they know that Dave, like John said, every time I was having an issue with my spam, he made sure that he was present or somebody referred me to him. So it's that repetition. It's that knowing exactly what you want and going for it and not settling for anything less. And um, just having the emotional and physical wherewithal to say, okay, if this is what I want to be remembered for, this is how I have to approach it. Exactly. Brand is more than just a logo or a symbol. Brand is everything. Think about Apple. If you think of their brand, what comes to mind? It's not just the computers. It's the entire experience of using a Mac versus a PC. They're two totally different things. Think about Amazon. When you think of Amazon, not only can find just about everything there, but also you get all of the feedback. You get whether it's a good item or a bad item. And I mean, it's just everything that's there. And then they expand it into even more. Hey, you bought this you might actually like this. Amazon recommendations was absolutely brilliant. I mean, and, and the bundle deals that they do, amazing. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly it. It's, it's, and it's an, it's an evolution too. So when we talk about that, it's, remember 10 years ago, uh, well, I don't even remember Amazon 10 years ago, but I know for a fact there was no prime video 10 years ago. It's that evolution. It's saying, okay, I want to be remembered for creating the world's best, um, online store. And then saying, not only is it a store, it's literally an entire experience and taking what you want to be remembered for and turning it into experience is how you, is like, it's an incredible transition because people know when they deal with Ashley, it's an experience. It's fun. Not even just dating, friendship, family, work. It's all an experience. And it comes from an evolution of saying, okay, I don't want to just be this in my day job. I want this to be an entire experience and it keeps you going it keeps you successful and it keeps you motivated to keep growing yes and that's that's really what it is you want to show the main trait that you want to be known for like instantly and then all of these other traits that also they like elevate that specific trait so it's like again amazon they started off selling books, then they started expanding into other stuff, and then they came out with the recommendations, and then they incorporated all of these reviews that you can also research for them. So you're not just taking their word for it, but here's what other people right. are saying. And then they added in their videos and Amazon Music and everything. And it all 
went back to that customer online shopping experience when you deal with them. Everything supported everything else. Yeah. So what is the Dave experience? What is the Jennifer experience that you want people to have to experience when they meet you? You know, what is that? Is it Dave's the nicest person in the world who does all my spamming blocking? Jennifer is the best drink maker I've ever met. What is that? And and how can you turn it into something that is going to not only be memorable, but people are going to want to come back to? I mean, honestly, Amazon would be nothing if we all hated it. Exactly. I mean, there's been a lot of people that have been that have tried to replicate Amazon and they failed miserably. Can't do it. They just can't do it. Uh, even with Elon Musk, there's been electric cars since cars were invented. Right. No shit. You can look them up there back in the, like 1917 and stuff like that. They've been around for a very long time. He was the first one that came out and made an ele- a reliable electric car, but it's an experience. I mean, what what's that setting you can actually set that car to? And it's like, I, I forget the name for it, but it like puts all the power and everything else once you hit that accelerator. And it's an experience. Which is awesome. And that's what, and like we said, that's what you want. I think when you finally realize what you want to be remembered for and you really know how to turn it into experience, like I said, not only does it motivate you to grow, but you're so excited to live. You're so excited to provide that service. And honestly, when it's, when I reduce it down to those terms, it sounds kind of, it sounds very, um, very distant. Like we can't as humans do that, but as humans, we are service providers by nature. Whether you are being the nicest person in the world or you are a cop or whoever you are, your job as a human being is to be a service provider. So it's not as distant because when I say it, it sounds distant. But then when I think about what you're creating, it's exactly what the human experience is meant to be. Right. People would not know who Steve Jobs is if Steve Jobs was not, well... Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's exactly, it's so funny when you say it like that, but it's so true. If Steve Jobs did not have the drive, the desire, he didn't want to be known as like the smartest tech guy in the entire world. He wanted to be seen as this man with drive, desire, independent, and like and literally vision. a fucking genius. Exactly. And that's the Steve Jobs experience. You ever sit down and listen to Steve Jobs talk, you get fucking goosebumps. Yeah. I mean, it's Steven Spielberg. I mean, you have Steve Jobs and then you have Steven Spielberg. You watch a Steven Spielberg movie and if he directed it, well, he's got a certain touch to all of his movies. And you just, I can sit back and not even know who the director is. I'm like, this is a Spielberg movie, isn't it? Because that is what he's known for. Yep. And I can guarantee you this, because he's worked so hard at creating this brand and not only creating, but perfecting this brand of filmmaking. Just about every single one of us in our top 20 have a, whether you know it or not, have a Steven Spielberg film in your top 20 because that's what creating that unforgettability is. It's perfecting who you are. And literally, while yes, you do evolve as a human, he still is true to who he's always been. Exactly. And that's insane. Yeah. And the the second step to this whole thing, it's going to sound a little bit harsh. But it's extremely true. Get over yourself. Best advice ever. We work with so many people that I can't do this because of this. I can't do that. Get those two words out of your vocabulary. I can't. Yeah, why can't you? That's yeah, always my question when I hear people say I can't. Why? <laughs> I mean, so many people are so concerned with their about failing that they never even try. It's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, I can't do something. No, 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 no. It's nothing more than a challenge. Right. Okay, it's going to be a challenge, but I can get there. Right. And when I hear I can't, what what I really hear is, Ashley, I'm too lazy or I don't want to or I don't know how. And that's okay. It is perfectly okay to not know how to do something. What's not okay is immediately giving up because you've already told yourself you can't do it. That is... I'm. The human mind is so powerful, you can just about do anything. And some people, I'm pretty sure they can fly. Yeah. What's funny is I see so many people that will get out there and they will become advocates for something, but they won't actually do anything. Oh, my goodness. We have been dealing with slacktivists. Yeah. 
I mean, they're, they'll sit there and they'll support the team, but they're not actually going to play the game. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly, dude. Like, and, and, and as someone who's been dealing with slacktivism in the last couple months, dealing with all the protests and helping organize and do all those things in the community, I've seen so many people do the exactly that. You know, they'll make a Facebook post, but then when I say, Hey, you coming out? Oh, no, 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 no. And, it, and it's excuse after excuse. But my thing is, if you truly want to make the difference, if you truly want to be the person who is a community leader, and we're just going to use this example for this, this, um, this actual step. If you want to be the community leader, if you want to be seen as the person who people go to when they're struggling or they, they need help, if you want to be that advocate, you need to right. get your ass outside. And you need to actually go out there and do something. It's almost like people are on a hamster wheel. They're mm-hmm. doing a whole lot of running, but they're not, not going. going anywhere. <laughs> and doesn't that get tiring? <laughs> yeah, actually, I hate running on treadmills. I hate running. I hate running as well. <laughs> but I, I hate running on a treadmill even more because I'm doing all of this exercise, but I'm not seeing anything. Right. I'm staring at the same fucking walls right in front of me. And I want scenery. I want to feel like I'm making progress. Mm-hmm. So things are passing by me. Not sitting there doing a bunch of work and not going anywhere. That frustrates yeah. the hell out of me. And when you're not over yourself, when you are limited by your own self, which I'm here to tell you, it's not uncommon. And when we say it, we're not saying it to be condescending. We're not saying get over yourself because we're better than you. We're saying get over yourself because every day we wake up, we got to get over ourselves. You have to put that pride yeah. aside. You have to realize that, hey, listen. There is no limit to what I can do. And not only that, I'm not going to limit myself. And every day it's a conscious choice to be better than I was yesterday. Oh, things aren't perfect yet. Well, perfection is never going to be achieved. You can get close, but you're never going to reach perfection. If we were perfect, we'd be in the top 100 or we'd be number one across the board for dating, relationships, love, success, and everything else. No, we just broke like the top 100 in Sweden. Oh, and Spain. Thank you, Sweden, Spain. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We love you guys. Yeah. So one small step at a time, small increments. I mean, we're working like tirelessly on our course. Now, the reason we haven't released it yet is because I refuse to cut corners. (laughs) <laughs> crazy over here is a perfectionist <laughs> that's why yeah it's just not ready yet uh, there's there are certain elements that yeah i can cut a corner and we can put out a half-assed course that and eh, it'll kind of get you there some maybe but no i want to give you your best chance so right. we're not going to cut corners on it but at the same time it's not going to be perfect no nope. we'll go in and we'll make small modifications here and there to make it better, but it's not going to be perfect. We'll never get to that perfection level. And the minute you see something as perfect, whether it's your relationship or anything, you got to take a step back because, I mean, obviously we all have those days that are just amazing and they're flawless. And, you know, you wake up basically floating on rainbows. You end up, you end it shitting the sunshine and that's wonderful. But if every day is like that, of it's your life, either, I'm sorry. Yeah, it does, <laughs> right? Like, I like a little bit of action here. That I like the, you know, I, I like my movie where the person, the main character, has a little setback in the middle of the movie. I like a story arc. So you want the story arc, but you also just need to get over yourself to the point where, okay, yes, those setbacks are going to happen. But instead of sitting in a corner and pouting for seven days, I'm going to be proactive about it. Right. I mean, go go out there and make mistakes. Yep. And that is really. Being authentic. That's what it is. If you go out there and you, you try something and you fall flat on your face and pretty much the whole situation just flatlines, you're being authentic. People will have mm-hmm. more respect for you for going out there, having the courage to step out there and actually try than somebody who's constantly in the back giving advice, but never doing. Never moving. And, and it's so easy to give advice and never do anything because you give this advice from this altruistic point of view where everything's crystal fucking clear and life is perfect. But if you get out in the trenches, you get out there, you go do it. When you give advice, it's going to be realistic. It's not going to be, well, ideally you want to do this. It's going to be, listen, here's what the fuck's going to happen. We get those emails every now and then 
from other podcasters. Hey, here's an idea for elevating your podcast. Um, mm. Okay. Thanks. And th <laughs> yeah, I go in and I look at it and they've already got their own podcast course on how to become like number one and all this other stuff, but they've only been doing it for a month. <laughs> Not like, only that, they've never listened yeah. to our show. Yeah, they've never that's listened to our one. show. I mean, that's that. Yeah, that's probably the most annoying ones. They want to give us advice on our show, but they have no idea about our format, how we select our topics, or anything else like that. They just come in and go, "Hey, here's an idea." No, you don't. This you don't know me. us. Yeah, that's those people. This worked for me, so it's going to work for you. That's not how it works, guys. And we know that. And you, as listeners, you write in and you say, this is practical advice. The reason we give you so much practical advice is because all we do is go out, basically, and make really fun mistakes and come back and say, well, yeah. did it this way, did it this way, <laughs> did it this way. <laughs> I have a big fan of this way. And John will be like, you know what, I think this way is better. And then we'll both be like, well, if you do it this way also, there's a way to do it. That's why this show works, because we go out and, and we kind of doing just it. fuck our lives up. <laughs> and then we come yeah. back and we're like, hey, guys. <laughs> I don't say go out and meet people at a, at a grocery store. For no reason. I mean, that's my, that's where I go the most. <laughs> I pretty much, <laughs> when I go shop, I only shop for like one or two days and, I, and that's it. So I'm back in there one or two days later, but I meet a lot of people there and I figured out, Hey, if I use this technique, it works. I, right? There was no joke. Um, day before yesterday, I actually have to go out tonight <laughs> to go shopping, but it's day so before, late. <laughs> yeah. But day before yesterday, uh, I, I went in and I picked some stuff up and I was parking my car and the slot behind me, somebody pulled into that one. This gorgeous girl stepped out. I was like, wow. Okay. I've got to talk to her. Well, I couldn't get my podcast turned off fast enough and shut the car Are off. You to us? Uh, no, actually I was listening to another one. <laughs> Uh, that, would, asking, that would have been funny. Yeah, they actually want to want me to come on their podcast. So I was listening to their show, just kind of getting an idea for their format and their topics, stuff like that. Anyways, she was ahead of me, like a good fifty feet. So I walked in, and she had this backpack on. It was purple with these little pink flowers and everything. All I did was go up and say, "Hey, how you doing? Nice backpack. Where'd you get that?" That was it. That's all I did. And we started a conversation. We actually walked through the entire store. I've got this like little hand thing and she's like pushing a cart. <laughs> and I spent like, yeah, the next like hour. all you needed. <laughs> all you needed was like sugar. <laughs> yeah. When, yeah. I just picked up a little thing, coffee, some, a uh, uh, little bit of sugar, uh, a couple, some little fruit things, uh, like mixed fruit tubs and stuff like that. and i'm just i just go through this entire store we talked for an hour and a half while she's doing all of her shopping and she's like are you going to be getting a no i only shop for one or two days and she just kind of looked at me she's like wait what she's like yeah what are you doing then and no that's how that's how things work though that's how you become unforgettable and and the reason is because this guy only needed sugar and she's like but he spent this whole time talking to me like clearly yeah he a, knows how to carry a conversation, but clearly B, is interesting enough where I can literally have him follow me around a grocery store. And that's who you want to spend your life with. You don't want to, and I know, John, you don't want to spend the rest of your life with a woman. But what I'm saying is, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the people you want around you. The possibility right. is there. Because uh, we'll be going out um, a couple of days from now. Yeah. And See? it's it's my it's my typical thing. I'm going to meet up for coffee and then we'll go out and do some walking around and then we'll do something fun. And then uh, pretty much dates over. That's the yeah. format that I use. The, that format works for me. But the whole time that I was spending with her, I was asking her like these really interesting questions. Like the one I, we brought a couple of days ago, if you were the dictator or if you ran a country, what laws would you have? We talked about that for about uh, three aisles. <laughs> three, that's really yeah. funny. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, this conversation is going to take about four aisles. And we only have about 10 more minutes. So you know what? Let's, let's go yeah. forward. 
but it's about finding those uh, those moments in which you can be totally authentic, and yep. that's what makes you memorable. Very simple. So, there, but you got to get over yourself. Use... You can't sit there and go, "Oh, what yeah. if? What if? What if? What if I fail? Oh, I'm not dressed right." Trust me, I was not dressed up. But you're going to the supermarket. <laughs> I have a very limited wardrobe on purpose because it forced me to do something or forced me to dress a certain way. Otherwise, I get totally lazy and I was like, I don't fucking care. And I don't want that impression. It goes against my personal brand. Yeah. But my I just kind brand is I don't give a fuck. I just threw on a shirt that I kept so simply because I don't want to ruin my good shirts when I'm doing like manual labor type stuff. <laughs> like, Where's this going? That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, no, I feel you. And that's kind of it. Like you said, your personal brand. You there's a and and that's a really good good example of how to make sure that your brand is your brand all the time. Be, being a brand does not mean you have to be on all the time. That's what I used to think. I used to think like, okay, I want to be this funny person. I have to be funny all the time. No, I can still be smart. I can still be this. So I keep a very limited wardrobe because I, my brand is, listen, I'm not dressing up for anybody unless it's like the Met Gala. And so I keep a, it's very, it's very Ashley. It's like a little, little bag that says like light and dark clothes. That's all I yeah. got, you know, and that's, that's exactly what it is. And I think when we think about branding, we think about getting over yourself. It's saying, okay, if I buy a shit ton of clothes, I'm going to be all over the place. People aren't going to be able to keep up with me. But some yeah. people, on the other hand, are fashionistas who can't wear the same thing twice. And if that's who you are, buy a fuck ton of clothes without going in debt. And kind of building on top of that is start doing something. Get I mean, actually get out. out there and start, start doing. Uh, people have a very limited memory. I mean, they, they really don't remember. Yeah. Seriously, people forget their life just as fast as they live it. Kind of think about that. If I asked you, what were you doing yesterday at 2.15? Unless it was something like, huge you probably right. don't or remember work it. yeah exactly and that's it we get out there go do i mean that's why i use the music method the way i meet people and this is so so typical but i ask them what their favorite song from their favorite band is half the time i don't even know the fucking song because i'm not a big music person so i say yeah play it for me and then they start to get all into it and they explain it but the reason i say that is because for me, getting out there isn't as difficult for as it is for some people, but actually carrying a fucking conversation can be daunting. So if I if I get them in the position where they're talking and I'm listening and then I can respond with something sarcastic or humorous or weird, then I'm in the money. And and that's what sometimes getting out there is. It's being able to maneuver a conversation. Sometimes it's simply stepping out of your house. Sometimes it's logging on to Tinder if that's what you're into. But getting out there, you can do it a number of ways. Yeah. And people really don't remember what you say. They remember what you do. Yep. So um, we can sit here, we can talk all day, but until you actually go out there and do it, you're really not going to remember it. Yeah. So when I'm talking with this girl, as we're going down the aisle and I ask her, what laws would you have if you ran a country or owned a small island? Well, frame it however you want. But that question is one of those that really sparks, uh, okay, I've never heard of that. Uh, wh what would I do? But we're going down through the aisle, and I'm not even looking at what's passing by us. I just stick my hand out, and I grab something right off the shelf. I'm like, would you outlaw this? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't even know what I have in my hands. I'm just, like, sticking something in front of her face. Right. It's, it's, it's like a fucking one of those electric fans with the water squirter on it. And you're like, would you outlaw this? Yeah. It, it works. It works. Getting out there is being being yourself, being different, making who you are, making that person. Because remember, this is all about being unforgettable. Making you that person and steering the conversation towards that. It's just one of those, like, little variables where... They expect one thing, and then I come off with something totally different. Some of the best movies out there is when you sit there and you're watching the movie, and the ending is nothing what you thought it was going to be. That's one of those memorable moments. Like, the movie the Shyamalan Saw. Shyamalan twists. Yeah. Well, I 
I hate M. Night Shyamalan. But <laughs> of course you do. Of course. Every <laughs> film writer hates M. Night Shyamalan because he does the most uncomplicated shit and makes so much money. So no, good. no, actually, so he, he's very predictable. Once you know exactly That's what his I'm formula, it's, ex- he it's does very predictable. Shit. It's but wonderful. the movie Saw, now that was a movie that kind of threw me for a total twist because the dead guy sitting in the middle of the floor gets up at the end and he's the one that set up the whole damn thing. Nobody saw that coming. Yeah, no, I agree. Saw in the whole franchise is very unforgettable. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. but it, everything is about I the memories. Think- I mean, mm-hmm. that's really what it comes down to. The brain remembers what it wants to remember. And if it was one of those unforgettable, if it's one of those moments that really sticks out, you remember it compared to the other 90% of your life. Okay, and being forgettable doesn't have to necessarily be a conversation. I, not everybody's a conversationalist. Some people are literally musicians. Some people are, you know, DJs. Some people, you're, you're, we're all different. So whatever it is, you can do, obviously, if you're in a grocery store, don't break out your records and start spinning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. be, be realistic with how you're going to be unforgettable. But if you're able to transition into, Hey, let's get together. Hey, let's, um, hang out. Maybe invite them to a set that you're playing. This way they can see something that you're good at. They can see who you are. They can see that and why you want to be remembered for that. Watching someone do what they love is sexy, no matter yeah. who it is. I pulled into, uh, I need to put gas in my car. And she's using the pump on the opposite side of me. I just kind of like, hey, nice how are you glasses. doing? Nice glasses. Hey, love the way you <laughs> see, mama. <laughs> yeah, but it's, Go out there and actually do something. Right. That's, that's really it. And if you can do something that actually enhances somebody's life, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything major. Right. You don't have to be Tony Robbins. Yeah. Notice that their tire's just a little bit low. Hey, your tire's low. That kind of stuff. Yeah. You don't have to go be Tony Robbins. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, and believe it or not, if you have a skill, like you're a musician or you play the harmonica, which is also a musician, um, or you're a, you're like John said, you can fix a tire. You can do anything that kind of makes their life easier. That's a skill. Don't say, well, what am I good at? All I can do is I'm an engineer. I don't know. See what their dream is. Build a little website. Like it's that kind of thing where you can enhance their life, but you have to be willing to number one, get over yourself and not think, what can I do for them? It's how can I do this for them? Or when can I do this for them? Yeah. And building on top of that is you want to be familiar but not too familiar. If people know always what they can expect from you, yeah. well, then you just kind of become boring. Well, they're only good yeah. for just that. That's why we say you want your major trait, what you want to be known for universally, but then you have all of these other sub-traits that kind of boost that up. And when you do it right, it's yeah. very fun because people get to... I don't want to say use because once again, that sounds very disconnected, but you guys know what I mean. People get to talk to you. People get to ask you for favors. People get to come to you for so many different things. And even if it's just a kind word or a pat on the back or any of those things like that, I mean, you get to see how you've affected these people to where they look to you for support. And it's so fun. Yeah. And you don't, the reason you want to become so familiar is because, well, people stop, they start to get bored and then they stop paying attention. Right. Why do you think uh, major corporations, they have these great ads out there and then they stop the ad because mm-hmm. that ad it becomes very predictable and they get tired of seeing it. That's why it's Coke like only, well, yeah, it's like Geico, but also Coke. They, they really only run the polar bear commercials during the Super Bowl. I mean, they're very limited with it. Yeah. I feel you. I agree, though. Uh, And that makes sense. I mean, and that's actually one of my favorite things. One of the things I can say is that people hit me up for the most random shit. And it it is. It's random. And it's because I've sort of branded myself as someone who you can just call, you know, and you you can't. You can just call me. And if I don't know how to help you, I'll figure out a way to. But that's what I do. And, And that's what you want. You want people to know that while, yes, you are dependable for these certain things, they can still call you for other things. It's not limited to you being the person who helps them with their spam blocker. They also know Dave's like a cool ass dude who can watch the Super Bowl with. That's how friendships and relationships are built. Yeah. Well, the girl that I was walking through the grocery store with. Now we, 
uh, I met her over on, if you're familiar with any grocery store, it's all divided up into sections. So I started talking to her over in the produce section. Funny. And then we started working our way through the aisles and kind of like where you get to the, what, the promotional aisles and the seasonal aisle and stuff. Yeah, like the billboards and shit. Yeah. So I've been one way with her through all of these aisles until we got there. And then I asked her that question about the, what laws she would have. And I just reached out and I grabbed something off and it was totally different. I had messed with her mental model of what she had already painted for me. So I was this way and then all of a sudden I surprised her with something. So I broke that familiarity and okay, not only is this guy interesting, but he's also kind of fun. Right. Pattern interruption, man. Yeah. It's good stuff. So that builds on the next one, which is build intrigue. Yep. A little mysterious. We constantly talk about being a little bit mysterious. Well, that's what this is. And sticking my hand out and just grabbing something off the shelf and not even paying attention to what it is, and I shove it in front of her face. <laughs> that happened to be right. like and you a don't roll have to be tape. a Bond villain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing, is when people hear advice like this, and, and this it doesn't necessarily affect on you as a person. I don't know you personally. But everything does not have to be taken to the extreme. Being a little mysterious does not mean you have to be some weird Bond villain who, like, you know what I mean? You can just be yourself and there's parts about you that are like, hmm, this is interesting. I want to explore this yeah. topic more about this person. It's not, it's not always just doing the most. Sometimes you can calm down. And sometimes that's the mysterious part. Like, this person's really upbeat, but very calm at the same time. And that's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like when you see a trailer for a movie or a new TV show. And, right. like, a, there's one that was playing on Amazon the other day. I think it, I can't remember what it is, but it's uh, has something to do with spies or whatever. But um, I see this trailer and I'm like, okay, I've, I need to see that. Now, yeah, exactly. That's kind of what you want to do. It's uh, Lost is one of those TV shows and it, they always left you with a cliffhanger to make you come back mm -hmm. and see what happens next. How does this yep, fit into the story? It. That's kind of what you it's want to do. Simple. Right. You don't, like I said, don't go to the extreme and try and do that really douchey thing where you're like, I don't know if I can tell you anything, blah, blah, blah. No, you be a person. Just be, be different. And yeah. like I said, sometimes the mystery is simply in how are they going to react to this? And obviously not in a toxic way, you know, but they're this person. I wonder what they're like in this situation. The easiest way for me to explain how to do this is through how you share your life with somebody else. So when I'm telling a story to somebody, I craft the story so I build a little bit of entry. It's like yep. when I was, uh, I've driven Formula One cars. So I'm describing how I was driving this Formula One car around the track there in Vegas. But the one little thing that I kind of leave out is that there's a course that you can actually take. <laughs> so for 80 bucks, I can go to the La Las Vegas Speedway and yeah. take a course on how to drive a Formula One car. But how you craft those kind of stories kind of builds the entry. Wait a minute, how how did you get to drive a Formula One car? <laughs> yeah, it, it's very it's very simple sometimes. Like you said, crafting a story is a way to build intrigue. Another way is just, like I said, do something that may seem out of character for what they get to know you from. Like you were talking about earlier. So let's say you guys meet at work and you are a very hard worker, you're a very serious worker. And you're like, oh, you know what? Let's go out to a carnival. <laughs> you yeah. know, like do that. And they're like, wow. You know, I always think of you as this, um, really, I don't want to say nerdy because I think that's kind of, or get a let's go to but, an open mic night. <laughs> yeah. And you like bust out the guitar and all of a sudden you're like Jason Mraz or something or whoever people like these days in music. But it's, it's very, it's very simple and it's very much that too. It's, it's so much easier to build intrigue. By just kind of showing them that there's different sides to your personality. Because after all, if there aren't different sides and you're a one-dimensional person, exactly. I doubt that's yeah. true. And if you want to get a really good sense of how to do this, it's very simple. Watch some nighttime talk show type things where they have the celebrity guests come on and they're answering questions. Watch how that celebrity crafts their answer. Because they're going to tell a little bit, then they're going to stop, watch for the reaction from the audience, right. and then they're going to give the punchline. 
or they're going to yeah. give the audience what they're looking for. You'll actually see the host of the show and their eyes will kind of get a little bit bigger and they're going to come off script from their questions yep. and they're going to start diving more into that. That's exactly how you do it. Just be, you know, like I said, be just mysterious. be authentic be, with it. Don't right, sit, be you. Yeah. You're not one dimensional. There's no, I've never in my life met a one dimensional human being and I've met a lot of human beings. Nobody's ever one dimensional. Usually people who want to come off as one dimensional are just afraid to get to know other people. So let that go. For the hundredth yeah. time, let that chicken yeah. go. Let it go. Get over yourself. And at no time is that celebrity being inauthentic. They're right. they're telling the truth. They're just very detailed in how they're going to share their life with the audience. Exactly, and and that's sort of what you do, and that's building a relationship. That's why celebrities, when you find your favorite ones, you follow them because they've built that relationship with you in the most perfect way for you and it's it's very broad when you think about it. it's very very intelligent and very complicated but it's also like we said it's very simple you connect with people who build stories the way you want to hear them yeah and the other thing is uh, now this one kind kind of has a catch 22 while you want to be authentic and everybody you also have to be vulnerable now the reason i say being vulnerable has a catch 22 is because there's strategic vulnerability yeah we see this more now than we have in the past, where people are going to be vulnerable to get a specific reaction out of a core audience. Yeah, and, and it doesn't mean you're crying all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's not always what being vulnerable means. Sometimes it means being more willing to share a part of your life that is complicated or difficult. And it doesn't mean you want sympathy. It just means you're... It, it's a level of trust you build with your audience yeah. or with the person you're with, or you say, listen, I trust you with this. Um, and if it's a personal relationship, obviously you trust them not to go tell anybody. If you, if it's your audience relationship, you're saying, I trust you enough to go see my movies after you hear about this. So it, it's that kind of thing where you're just building trust and you're showing people that, listen, I do have emotions. I'm not some rock hard idiot. I'm, I'm a person. That's all being vulnerable is. Yeah, and you're not trying to win approval from anybody because I see this a lot with a lot of companies where, oh, we're we're a green company. Uh, yeah, you're we, not pandering. We sent, yeah, they're pandering to win approval. And I can almost guarantee a lot of you have already done strategic vulnerability. Yeah. Have you ever gone to a job interview and somebody asks you, what's <laughs> your biggest flaw? If you gave an answer, that's being strategically vulnerable. Well, so sometimes I work too like, hard. <laughs> I hate that shit, dude. Listen, when I, I work with some interns, and when I hear them say that, I literally throw them to the bottom of the pile because I don't see that as vulnerability. I see that as some self-serving asshole who thinks they're going to trick me with, I work too hard. I care too much. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I am. I, I, what's your biggest flaw? You know, sometimes I just, I can't stop walking old ladies across the street. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those. Okay, goodbye. Like, I'm done. I, I, I don't need to hear anymore. I know that you're a liar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just don't be serious all the time. I mean, sometimes right. I do get too involved in projects and I can't, I, it's really hard for me to let them go. That's one of my flaws. Or I do, I am a perfectionist, right. but there at the go. same time, I do know that I am a perfectionist and I have to let things go. I just yeah. need to put it out there. And sometimes you need to be reminded. And that's that's being vulnerable without being an asshole. Like, and, I work too hard. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah. And if it's if it's for a relationship type thing, here's a here's a very good example. And you, if you want to know more about this, is that we actually have a full on uh, article. It's on our website. You can go to it. You can read all of this stuff in case you forget. Because, like I said, people forget stuff. But if it's for a relationship, yes, you know that love can hurt, but you're going to go for it anyways. I hate that. <laughs> okay. God, I hate that. And it's, you're not wrong. It's just when I hear stuff like that, it just makes me like, oh, my God, no, you're doing this. And it's not it's not something wrong to say. It's very correct. And you can say things like I've been hurt before and I'm ready to put myself back out there. I When I hear them, though, I'm just like, oh. Okay. Really, all it is, is being vulnerable is you know yourself, you know what you're good at, and you know what 
your shortcomings are. Right. If someone says, what's your biggest flaw? You don't have to say like, I'm manic depressive. And every month I go into a cave and I can't get at myself out. That's, that's not being vulnerable. That's just oversharing. There's a difference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's time to be serious and there's time to not be serious. And just, uh, when you can admit your own shortcomings to somebody, it actually puts you ahead of the game. It puts you ahead of everybody else. Because if you can kind of crack on your own little shortcomings, like me being a perfectionist, yes, I crack on myself all the time about it. But what that does is that it allows somebody else to see, well, if he's this way, then I can also become, I can be more vulnerable with him because he's not going to judge me. Right. And then when you see those reoccurring behaviors in somebody, if they're able to tell you my biggest flaw is this and I'm working on it. And by the way, working on a flaw is one of those things. Once again, most of the things we talk about, guys, they never fucking end. You will, John will never yeah. stop being a perfectionist. <laughs> nope. Okay. He will work on it. Like I will never stop being, I will never stop working too hard. I can't even say this. <laughs> <laughs> I will never stop being somebody who literally can just turn their brain off whenever they want to. But I work on it. I work on being conscious. I work on being receptive to human emotion. And, and that's something you have to do. But when you tell someone, this is my biggest flaw, what you're saying is, here is who I am. Who are you? And when they see that, you put them at ease. They know that they're dealing with a person and not with somebody who is incomparable because there's nothing worse than meeting somebody who thinks they're perfect and trying to be like, I accept you. Exactly. Like, what do you need my acceptance for if you're already perfect? Why are you even trying to date me? And that's, that's kind of what it is. It's that, it's that thing that they used to teach men, like peacocking and shit. Like that shit don't yeah. work because it's it annoying does. and it's <laughs> uncomfortable. I mean, it's, it's fun to be around for a couple of minutes, but after a while, it just becomes brain overload. And right. it's just like you're dumb, you know? Becoming unforgettable, it's not a technique. It has nothing to do with your looks. It has nothing to do with your assets. It's in how you present yourself. Yep. So if you want to do the old school thing, you want to go and get dressed up and peacock and all that other stuff yeah. <laughs> or if you want to go in and get plastic surgery or you want to sit there and show off your fancy car or whatever that you probably rented we have a story on that <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or, you can, or have, start flashing cash it's going to work very short term it's not going to right. build anything long term and if it is building something long term it's based on transaction which we always say there ain't nothing wrong with it but if you want to build a meaningful relationship which like i said transactional, meaningful, same thing to two different people. Some people love that shoulder on the arm. You know what? I got cash. You got ass. We're good to go. Some people want deep emotional connection. What we're teaching you is deep emotional connection. Yeah. If you want to know about the transactional thing, just send us a message and we'll give you a couple tips. And next thing you know, you're married to the most beautiful person in the world. And but if you so, want as soon as you run out of cash, they're going right, to she's gonna leave. Yeah, <laughs> divorce. Here she is going to leave. And that's what's going to happen. And it's going to happen a couple of times. Um, but if you want to build something that lasts and it's meaningful and that's what you're into, then this is, this is what you're listening for. You want to be unforgettable. You want to be remembered for the right reasons. You want to be authentic. You want to be vulnerable and you just want to be fucking happy. Cause once you're able to master all these things, and like we say, it sounds like a lot when you listen to it for 40 minutes, but once you get in the swing of it, the minute you step out that door and you're like, I'm me, bam, it just becomes second nature. There's no one simple phrase. There's no one no. signature item that you can do that is going to give you the best predictors or put you into that unforgettable category. It's not going to happen. It's the entire package. And really what we have here is the framework for building becoming unforgettable. And it's not complex. It's really not five all. little short things. One, you want to build a deep, intimate connection and, through sharing little things and creating a small emotional pleasure in that one specific moment. It's like me at, talking to her, asking her, asking her an interesting question and grabbing a, I, I think it was tape. Is what I pulled off the shelf. Like duct, <laughs> like, like yeah, it's like a roll clear. of duct tape. I just like boom. <laughs> would, <laughs> would you, you outlaw this? this? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cannot I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just that, and it's just that little bit of a laugh, and yeah, the rest of it was history after that. But you also want to know what trait you want to be remembered for, 
And you have to define it. You have to get specific. The more detail you can create with it, the better it's going to be. Write it down. Write yeah. it down. Write everything down. From here on out, when you start working on yourself, write it all down. Have a blueprint. Because my God, if you don't write it down, if you don't have a blueprint, you're going to be changing your mind all the time. Yeah. And you have to give it time to work. You can't right. sit there and try it once and it failed. And so, okay, well, that wasn't, that didn't work. So I'm going to try this other trait. You have to give it time to work, develop it, figure out where you can make small adjustments in order to make things work. It's kind of like us working on SEO. We're big on SEO right now, but we're making small little changes and then giving it time to work. It's the long game. Next is get over yourself. Become a person who is resilient. Go out there and fail graceful. I've done it many times. Uh, I used to run a martial arts school, and while I was in the academy, the law enforcement academy for the agency I work with, everybody was like, oh, he's a martial artist. He's a black belt. He has his own martial arts school, this, that, and the other. I went out there, and the guy choked me out. No shit. Yeah, Got me yeah, into a hold and what choked me the fuck out. <laughs> a black belt don't mean shit if somebody has better tactics than you. I, I People think, oh, he's a no, black actually, belt. Sometimes you get knocked the fuck out too. Well, actually, what I did was I intentionally gave him my back because I figured, okay, I want to do this. And as soon as he takes my back, I'm going to flip it. Yep. And nope, he got me he got and locked me the right fuck in. You. <laughs> you, you were like, oh shit, why am I off the fucking ground right now? Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, so I, I mean, he choked me out and they brought me around. Everybody thought I died and I was set, I popped up and I'm like, nope, well. That shit didn't work. Guess what I'm not going to do next time. <laughs> exactly. And that's yeah. the thing. Failing gracefully is fun sometimes. Sometimes it is fun to get choked out, ladies and gentlemen. I actually sat there and I was like, and that's a lesson on how long it actually takes to choke somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, they knew it was a fuck up. They knew I messed up. But I was like, okay, I fucked up, but there's a lesson in there for you. So, there's like seven lessons in that. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. And stop sitting on the sideline and stop watching. Stop being coming a piece of furniture over in the corner and get out and actually start doing something. Be a centerpiece. Yeah, be a centerpiece. And it could be just uh, dressing just a little bit differently than everybody else. I mean, that's what I do. That's, yeah, it, it works for me. I dress just a little bit differently than everybody else. And that garners a little bit of attention. It's not a whole lot. And it's, I really don't stick out from the crowd that much. But it's enough. Yeah, it's just enough that people, I mean, I'm not going out there and acting like a clown. Yeah. So. But if that's your thing, be the clown. That's your thing. And then build a little bit of entry. The biggest pleasure enhancer that the body has is the human brain. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing happens without the brain. <laughs> so I guess technically. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and what it does, the whole thing is that it wants to seek out interpersonal connections. What is familiar to me and how can we connect? Yep. So you give just enough specific details, peak the curiosity before filling in the rest of the story. So you guys, so simple, so, so fun. Simple. So, so what are you going to do this week to go out and be, you know, be unforgettable? Write us in. Let us know. Like, hey, this is, I heard your show on being unforgettable. This is what I wanted to do to change that. Let us know. We want, we'd love to shout you out. We'd love to even email you back and talk to you about it because that's, after all, that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. And if you're kind of like lost a little bit, hey, write in. And we may not have the specific answer for you. It really depends on how much detail you give us. John does. John absolutely has the specific <laughs> answer. I will not. I will have some basics and he'll, he'll, he'll then back me up with the, with studies and everything like that. You will get a complete answer from us. I promise. We'll at least be able to point you in the right direction. Right. Hey, give this a try. See how it works. If it doesn't work, write us back in and we'll, we'll be able to adjust from there. Oh, yeah. So that's it. There's the five keys to becoming unforgettable. We also have another post. It comes from earlier and it's how to get somebody to the point that they can't stop thinking about you. Yeah. And it kind of works hand in hand with this. They won't be able to stop thinking about you for a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of days, but this one, you build this in, add it to that, and... Next thing you know. Yeah, next thing you know, wedding bells are happening and marriage is being planned, and you're <laughs> you're like, oh, shit, I didn't want to go this way. 
(laughs) 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 Yeah, no doubt. And that's exactly what we want for you. If that's what you want for you, um, guys, always remember, like, rate, subscribe, share, tell your parents, tell your friends, comment, literally email us. And I mean that, like, when you hear shows like this, where we talk about how to's, always email us and say, Hey guys, I heard your show. This is the steps I'm taking. What do you think? And as we grow and get to know you, you know, hopefully we can have you on the show. We can do something like that and we can really start to help you. And, you know, that's what we're all about. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we're do. about. We're, we're here to take it from beginning to end and start off with where you're currently at and help you kind of define what you're looking for and then taking you step by step to make yep. that happen. Whether you just want to go out there and party with a bunch of people looking for a promotion, because amazingly <laughs> enough, this stuff does work. It works, getting, yeah. Like, that's how I got promoted because I became unforgettable for yep. certain traits. Then... If you want to get married, if you just want to date like a bunch of people, kind of like yeah. I do, or if Whatever you want to go to totally monogamous like Ashley does, but you want to find that certain someone, like that's Ashley what did. we're here to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works, dude. Seriously, like we're both really happy in our relationship game because the shit we're telling you works. And if it ever crumbles, at least we can build it back because yeah. we have the tools. So it's not, we're expecting our lives to turn out exactly as we planned. We're just planning for our lives and having backup plans for it. So, of course, write us in, talk to us, tell us how you feel, tell us what you think, all that good stuff. Yep. And with that, we will talk to you on the next one. That's all for this episode of the Girls Ask Guys show, where all of us learn to master this thing called life together. For more answers to your questions on life and love, be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss a single episode. And head to girlsaskguysshow.com to submit your questions for a future episode or apply to be a guest on the show. Good luck out there, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Girls Ask Guys Show.